When you're trying to create nice finished lines, it's very easy to maybe sort of tighten up a little bit too much, to focus too much on accuracy and precision, and it's easy to kind of lose the personality, the flow, the whimsy, often the character that we really enjoy from good line work. In this video, which is actually part three of a multi-part tutorial series, I'm gonna focus on lines and line quality. I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through the process of creating the finished lines for a cover quality, sort of highly detailed, illustration. And even though this stuff kind of just takes time, look, it just takes time to get good at line work, to really, again, get that mix of solidarity and personality into your work. I think there's a couple of key things that can really help. The first is to really get the speed right. I feel like often in the beginning, we're either going too fast or too slow. We're trying to rush the process, get it over with. We're maybe sort of worried that things aren't working. So we just kind of draw a little bit too fast. Or again, you know, we're sort of tightening up and, you know, going really slow and we're kind of not allowing ourselves to flow. I think getting this balance right is really key. The second thing to consider is the way that lines kind of don't exist. Lines exist in this kind of iconic symbolic realm. There's no lines around us, but they're a major part of how our brain perceives the world. We do actually perceive and delineate forms through their outline. We don't see the outline, but we understand the world through outline. So comic books and you know the line and color style is a way of kind of hijacking that iconic way that we often represent faces and expressions and everything around us. And we are able to kind of, you know, sort of make that into this interesting style that actually can sort of rise above realism in many ways and be kind of more real because it speaks directly to how we perceive everything. But what this means is we need to respect this. We need to understand that, yes, drawing is a matter of structure and form or understanding how to create expressions and how to represent things to people, but also the lines that we create are this kind of special thing that is symbolic, it's iconic. And I think if you can kind of master these things and really sort of feel confident in what we're doing, it allows you to experiment a little bit and again, play with this magical idea of where we're creating, you know, these crazy expressions, a full world with this weird idea of sort of drawing lines. As is usual for a Drawing Codex video, this is not going to be fast paced nor heavily edited. This is a real time, fully narrated tutorial. I'm doing this step by step and I'm going to show you how I create these finished lines. So this one is a little bit rough, right? If you're kind of wanting something really sort of, you know, snappy, this is me drawing uh, a lot of leaves, right? But it's so important to understand that this is how it's done, right? Um, you know, we have to sit through, and this is one of these cathartic experiences where as an artist, you know, you're doing your finish lines, you can kind of just chill out, hang out, you know, listen to some music, listen to a podcast or something. So again, you know, I think it's important to see and understand the pace at which this is created. That's why I kind of create these real time tutorials. So hopefully that sounds interesting. Hopefully you'll join me. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop, developing your own simple, reliable, line and color process and style. You'll get access to all of the brushes and Photoshop documents and tricks and tips that I use as I create the illustration in this guide. It's free, the link will be in the description, so go check that out if that's something you're interested in. All right, it's time to do some finished lines. You can think of this as pencils, you can think of this as inks, Whatever it is, you know, I created a whole comic book with pencils and that's what I use for my finished lines. So I like to think of the inking process traditionally in comics just as finished lines. You can use whatever you want to get the job done, but we're gonna create the final lines that are gonna be the major kind of building block of the line and color style for this image, which is kind of a cover faux cover and just kind of making this up. I like making covers for things that don't exist. It's a good way to kind of gauge whether or not this thing is interesting. And uh, also, you know, just sort of you get to practice composition 
creating interesting typography. And again, it's just a fun little exercise to do. So we've completed our construction drawing. Let's, uh, let's look at where we've come so far. So this was our initial, initial, initial pencil drawing. And if we kind of look at this, um, yeah, this is kind of the size that this was. So this is not a traditional sort of thumbnail. But the important thing when it comes to planning images is to think of what is the purpose and the utility of a thumbnail? The purpose and the utility of a thumbnail is to be able to get, get a feel for whether or not something works at a small scale. Now, you, you can do this any way you want. The goal is to come up with a, an outcome, an output that is going to sort of read from a long, a long way away. It's going to function as a thumbnail style image. It, it doesn't, it's not a preliminary, it doesn't have a lot more detail in it. it. It is effectively a thumbnail, but I did draw it pretty big, which again, I think just highlights the fact that you can make your weird process work however you want. Um, I think it was good to gauge proportions a little bit better drawing this bigger. I think it's, uh, you know, a little bit looser, right? You know, um, and uh, again, you know, that's just can be a fun way to kind of plan. So kind of did it big. Just took a photo in, you know, with my smartphone, cleaned it up a bit in Photoshop, put it here on my template, and then we did our color rough. And this, again, is, is very much that, you know, sort of thumbnail style image. It, it's like, if we look at it from very far away, right, you know, which one of these is the most interesting? And once we've done that, it's a matter of saying, okay, I've got my plan. I know where I'm going. I've got my simple color scheme. These things are, are very, are very basic. And the next step is construction, which is what we did sort of previously. And this is where I say, all right, let's go in there and let's draw this properly. Now, one of the things that I always recommend, and I make this a big part of the Line and Color Academy process, so that there's a there's a series of tutorials that I that I have in there, and I'll just share with you the, the basic sort of idea here. And this is a really good thing to remind yourself of. What I sat, what I have is like little videos that basically you can go and watch before and after you finish a particular stage in your process. So the Line and Color process typically has a number of very simple stages, and they follow the the traditional comic book style of creating imagery. So again, we often start with a sketch, right? You have a thumbnail. Again, for a cover, we, we often do a, a color thumbnail. Some people do all of their pages with color thumbnails, right? And you know, that kind of works pretty well. And then you have your pencils or your construction phase. And this really is where we prepare ourselves to ink. Now, before you start each of those stages and after you start, after you finish those stages, I think there's a couple of things that are always good to remember. So, if you think about the, you know, sort of thumbnail stage, right, often what I sort of recommend is to just say, like, look, you know, have you explored enough possibilities here? Have you really plumbed the depths? Does this actually meet the brief? Does this actually do what you need it to do? What is the purpose? What was I here for? You, you can easily get distracted with these things. Um, and and, a, and w w one of the things I have here for when you just finish the construction phase is step back and just make sure that most of the basic things are right. So this is where we would check and say, is my horizon line, do I know where it is? And let's just double check everything and say, okay, look, let's look at this bird, right? Am I, am I looking up at this bird, right? This is above the horizon. Um, and, and you can sort of flip the drawing, basically just take a look at it. But before you move to the next stage, just step back, take a deep breath. I think this can be why it's good to, you know, get up. And, and often this is what I am doing, you know, when I'm recording these, it's, you know, I do have a little break between these, these, uh, sections and just go, is there anything wrong? Is there anything that needs fixing? Is there anything that I haven't, haven't really, that I'm going to regret? Right? Am I going to regret everything? And I have like a list of things that typically are good to check. So these things are like, do I know which direction the arms are going? So for instance, often it's very easy to draw an arm, right? You know, if I kind of, let's go and see if I can 
get this, right? So if you're drawing foreshortened arm, for instance, it's very easy to kind of get the 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 shape right and say, like, okay, that's a, that's a foreshortened arm. But the but the shape from a foreshortened arm that's going to like away from you, away from the camera, versus towards, it's not that much different. So often, what can happen is that you kind of draw these shapes and you kind of forget like, wait, is the arm coming at us or is it is it going away? And often what you can have is you, you will have drawn things that are wrapping around the arm, but they're kind of draw it, they're wrapping around the wrong way. Other things to check is just to go through and just like double check some of this anatomy. So, you know, one, one of the things I do kind of notice is that I, I kind of scaled this head down a little bit. And as I do that, I, I kind of notice that Look, this arm is kind of chunky, right? It's kind of big, and this shoulder is kind of big too. Um, and it might just be good, you know, I can sort of sit there with the, right, the warp tool. Eh, warp tool's not always the best the best thing to do. Um, yeah, but let's just check. I've got center line here, so I'm going to check all my centers. Center line here, right, I've got this shoulder here. Right, and I do just feel like this shoulder has become quite chunky. And what I just want to do is separate where we've got the cape coming over, which that, that can be kind of chunky, that's fine. And, and this arm is, is kind of coming out at us, right? So it's okay for it to be a little bit longer, but, you know, let's just sort of drop this down, right? If, if I kind of dropped this down, you know, would it, would it hit the right... Thing. like I, I think it's probably okay um, but I just needed to to tuck it in a little bit and just make sure that you know I'm not having to redraw this line a bunch when I go to do the finish um, yeah so I've got this line coming up all right well now the other thing that's worth noting is that when we really look at it one of the things that I did if you look at the thumbnail Going back to the thumbnail, boom. So here I sort of have this cape just kind of falling down here. And it's kind of the same length, but here what I've done, let's flip that back. Here what I've done is added this little fold in there, right? So I've got this cool fold and I'm like, oh, look at drawing drapery. This is It's so easy to make these errors. I'm drawing drapery. Look how well I've drawn the drapery. Again, I'm not convinced of this drapery, but you know, we feel like we're really winning. And then, and then you kind of realize, well, that, that means that this cape is like a lot longer on this side than this side. And so then it's like, well, a big part of the graphic nature of this is, is that this kind of cut this line. I feel like this shape is so important. I, I don't want to lose that, but it doesn't make any sense anymore, right? This should be up here. Right, and then you see the foot, but I don't want to do that because I, because I, 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 that means I have to draw the foot, <laughs> which is like, look, you, you could probably just bite the bullet, draw the foot, just draw the foot, guys. But I could just kind of say, well, hey, is anyone going to notice? Maybe not. But but I could also just say, look, let let's make this. We we don't have to make it as long, right? But but let's let's try and make it a little bit longer. I could do that. That might be worth looking into. Like will will that will that fix it? Or is that just going to make it look weird? So these are the questions and this is where, you know, like genuinely The color will help you to understand this. It's very hard to understand how the color is going to affect us, right? And how that shape will actually play out until we put it in. I mean, I think that works all right. I, I think it, I think it, it, it sort of gets us over the edge. Mm. 
But these are the things where you, it's very, 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 very useful to have these little things in your process where you do just say, hang on, let's slow down, pump the brakes, let's just double check everything. Have I have I drawn too many fingers on a hand? Um, you know, have I set the horizon line, right? You know, horizon line is over here. Have I set the horizon line? Have, have I done everything properly and then realized like, oh, actually, you know, this thing that I drew over here doesn't actually match that. So let's just go through, let's just double check. I, I'm pretty sure everything is is sort of okay. Um, but yeah, this is where you just go through, you double check and you make sure like, is my anatomy right? You know, as my are my center lines right? You know, probably one of the things that I'm I'm sort of looking at with the face is that, you know, I, I feel like this, right, this eye is, is kind of like creeping up versus this one. And that could just be to the de degree of like, the thickness of the line that it's doing that, who knows? But yeah, you know, just make these notations. The other thing is, I feel like this ear is getting lost. So I really wanna trace this. All right, let's double check, let's make sure. Right, that's where my lines are going. That's kind of where I want it. I'm imagining it's gonna be sort of coming out from here somewhere. Let's see if we can just draw that ear out. Just give us a bit better shape design. Right. And then in, the other thing I could probably do is really work on this hair design. Um, but yeah, I think what I'll try and do is wing it when with the with the final lines, um, and we'll see how that goes. Again, I will probably regret that, but that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do. But yeah, apart from that, I think we're, I think we're good. But I, I think this is such an important habit as you move on to finish lines. It's just to always have a have a little part in your process where you step back, um, check, and then. As you progress and you finish this, you'll notice, hey, you know, I, I missed a bit. That's fine. Next time, next time, let's uh, let's be a bit more sensible, right? Let's actually put that in. So you, you build your process, you build your ability to understand what you need. All right, so how are we going to do these finish lines? I'm basically going to go from the foreground um, to, to background. And, and normally I, I like to kind of have, if we kind of look at the, yeah, I think with these, I'll just, I'll just kind of go as we, as we progress, I'll just put in layers. But I think a good way to think about it and with my comic book pages, I often have just a, a number of layers kind of set up. And this allows me to just kind of think about where these things are going to be placed. And so I'm just naming them sort of background. Because I know we're going to have probably quite a few. So you could just make these as you go. I, I do find it's good to kind of have them there. So you can really get into the flow of it. So I've just got four foreground layers, four background layers, and a character layer. Now, you can do this in, in whatever sort of order you want. Um, but I do find that the most efficient way is to go from front to back. So I've just got a 15 pixel brush. This is the same one I use in the line and color quick start guide, the free guide you can sort of download. Probably not going to be using any brushes or any techniques that are not in that. This is a more complicated tutorial, obviously, but I do go over the process in a lot more detail in the quick start guide and try and sort of really step through it. So download the quick start guide. Um, I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you you know don't have these brushes, if you want the brushes, you know, if you want to sort of get the access to that PSD, kind of see generally how I'm how I'm doing things. This is exactly the same process. I'm just increasing the complexity of the image and we'll kind of see that here with the number of layers. But, uh, you know, as I have said many times, 
the number of layers makes it easy in some ways. So I'm focusing here on trying to get a good silhouette. So these are probably, like, it, it doesn't really matter how sort of clean or detailed these are. These are foreground elements, so they need to have a fair amount of fidelity. But at the same time, they're not the focus. So we don't want them to draw too much attention from the main sort of subject the main hierarchy, the, the thing that we, we want to kind of look at is the character. So it's always, it's worth kind of remembering that. Mostly what we need is interesting silhouettes out of these. But if I close all these lines, even though it can be a bit of a pain, if I do close all these lines, it's going to make a huge difference to how easy my life is later on. So here, one of the reasons that I kind of mentioned in the beginning, I am working with a, a template that I normally use for covers. It's about nine and a half thousand pixels high. And one of the reasons that I have the bleed there so this basically would be printed, all right? And this probably would not be printed as a rough example. Is that we, we, we do wanna watch our tangents as we cross the bleed area. And I do want to make sure that I pay attention to the finish of what is inside and outside the bleed. The reason for that is that if I just turn this off and draw willy-nilly, it's very easy to forget that there is going to be a cutoff line there. And if we forget that there's a cutoff line there, then often you get little weird tangents. You get like bits that, that don't really feel like they're they're going in the right direction. Um, you get little sort of awkward areas. And, and these, what will happen is they will draw focus. So anything that's kind of awkward, right? Like a little sort of tangent, right? Like some sort of line that crosses over. So here's a good example. So behind this, I'm going to have a, a log, right? And then I've got this line here. And you can see that this is kind of creating a weird tangent with where I'm imagining or planning the crop line to be. So what I'm going to do, probably as I ink this, is just make sure that we don't have that kind of weird tangent line. But if you turn off, if you turn off your sort of crop marks or what's actually going to be on the finished cover, you can't see any of that. So it's very easy for me to go, well, I don't have a tangent here, right? This is fine. But then we run into trouble later on. And all these little things, right? These are very, these are very subtle, right? None of this is going to really make a difference, um, you know, to whether people like the art or you know whether it, you know, has an emotional response. But it's these little bits and pieces that will give you that extra, that extra little percentage point of polish. So these are, you know, these flowers don't really, don't really make any crazy amount of sense, but they will kind of do the job. I, d I don't know what type of flowers they're meant to be, <laughs> what's going on. But as I said, I am going to try and close all of these lines and we'll show you, you're about to see when we get to the video where we just, where we sort of go into the, the flatting and the coloring, 
right why that is the case but trust me when I say if I can close all these lines which means I don't have right like it, it's a lot easier to just draw you know sort of quickly but then I've got if you sort of zoom up right little gaps here and that can when we do some of our selections and other sort of flatting things that can become a little bit of a pain other reasons why again you need to, to look at, you know, these little micro compositional issues is, for instance, here I've got these little sort of bits that come out underneath, like maybe these would be sort of green leaves or something like that. So if I, if I kind of have this coming up just a little bit, um, that'll just create this little weird dot at the, at the edge. So just trying to, you know, create a clean look. I'm either going to go over... Or I'm going to stay, stay in. Again, let me know if these little sort of things are sort of interesting, helpful. So this is, again, not quite closing there. Now, why draw down here with the bleed? Well, look, you never know. Um, you never know. And it's better if you have some stuff down there that kind of makes sense than if it's just sort of empty space. So, you know, you, you could certainly just start to, you know, care less down there. Go a little bit quicker, a little bit rougher, but yeah, I think if we just kind of draw it all in, it means, you know, you, you've always got that extra space there. You can, you can recompose. So these flowers are really not making much sense like the, the, the little petals are all sort of different sizes and stuff but eh, I, don't, I don't think it matters that much you let me know whether whether you think it's uh, more botanical anatomical accuracy is is required again similar to the bird that you know is in this image that isn't probably the most anatomically accurate it doesn't always matter that much because we're drawing cartoony and we're drawing fantasy. Oh, so again, this one going outside. So this is where you know. Let look. You know, I probably don't need to to put in you know heaps amount of effort here because this is not going to be in the actual image. But hey, you know, like why not? Probably also not going to hurt. So this feeling of complexity where we... Oh, so that's another... There we go. Like, what, what should we do here? Right, is that too much? Should I then put something here? So yeah, these are like little overlaps do make a pretty big difference in terms of making it feel complex. Right? Like this kind of depth. Yeah, it's not really going to matter back there, but Okay. So I feel like those are the main ones that are in the I feel like some of these are, are going to be on a different, different plane. All right, but I'm going to try and see if we can create a bit more complexity here. And again, you know, there's no real reason why 
we would do this um, <laughs> because you can't see these things, but I think it will help. Again, you, you never know when you're going to need to print it bigger, do a nice print, whatever. So yeah, that's another example. Let's make sure we go straight in there. No, oh, it's a bad tangent, but it's all right. It's on the outside. So yeah, that's probably it. So that's our foreground three, right? So our far, far foreground. Now, normally another step that I would do before you move on to the finish lines that it's part of that sort of systemized process is to really think about and almost outline if you're really struggling, really think about like what's going on what layer. Um, you know, these things are in the foreground. Probably I'm imagining, right, like this stuff here is going to go on the second layer. Right, that's going to go there. Right, that, this. And then this character, right, and all this stuff will go on its will go on its layer there, and then we'll be sort of into the background. That's kind of a my mansion. So there's probably only actually two foreground layers, which is kind of cool. All right, and got this here. So again, doing a lot of this type of inking work, right, the, the finished work here, it does take a long time. It is laborious, but it is kind of chill out time, you know. If, if I wasn't recording a tutorial, this is where I'd be listening to something, listening to an audio book, you know, doing something, listening to interviews, just chilling out. Um, and because I've, you can see again, you know, some of these flowers I, I kind of roughed in more than others some of them we we really went um you know sort of detailed with and so you can see that you know sometimes i'm able to just kind of make it up and, and draw those lines now this is an interesting point as well because i'm i'm not i'm not closing the line on these but it can be, and I guess the question also is like, well, should this be on that? Maybe that should just be on the foreground. Maybe I'll just move it. Um, no, I'll keep it here. I'll keep it here. Um, but what I am going to do is just draw through this. And I'll show you why. This is like one of those um, concepts that, does take a while to, to get used to. But this will make the flatting process even easier. Boom. So here, what I might do, see if I can add So this won't, this will be hard to close the lines on, right? Because I'm adding a little bit of texture to the, to the top of this, which is kind of annoying, but at least I know it's there. So yeah, I'm going to make it so that pretty easy for me to flat this shape here. Now, if you're just doing a, a rougher image, right, you know, th this stuff is probably not going to matter, right, you know, worrying about, 
Oh, is it going in or above or behind or whatever? You know, you can just kind of mess around there. It's all good. These are just the little bits and pieces that I've sort of learnt to do over the years. Um, so again, this... And this is also where I, I feel like we could really benefit from maybe adding an extra an extra layer got this so maybe we will have a few more layers there So this is where down here we are going to start to fade away. All right, I'm no longer going to worry too much about tangents and things down there because these are edges that we're going to we're going to lose. Let's just draw this in and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Boom. Boom. All right. So this is going to come behind here. All right, got that. And then kind of have the leaves for this thing. Boom. All right, this, we're going to have some more leaves coming this way. But basically in here, we're just going to get some vague grass texture. So that's what I'm going to put here. And this will give us a little bit of busyness behind there. All right. I'll see if I can close some of these lines at least. But yeah, when it comes to here, this stuff is not going to be that important. But I am going to try and create the patterns down here. All right, if we sort of look at what's going on. Yeah, making them somewhat somewhat pretty to look at. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Also, some of these. So, again, thinking about how we can. Try and close or get some of these lines closed. So this stuff seems like it's not important, but often, honestly, this can be a huge, huge pain if we don't get it right. And again, we'll um when we do the, the color flatting um, up next you see what I'm talking about with all these bits and pieces. So I think this is a great example of where we're just kind of poking above here a little bit. I don't feel like that's super effective. Um, yeah, let's see if we can oh, add a bit there. Um, the other thing we can do is, on the other side of this, maybe 
maybe I can put some of this in here on this layer. Um, but yeah, I would really recommend doing a lot of these little steps, like figuring out what goes on what layer, like re really, really make this a, a separate part of the process, right? Where you just go through and um, double, triple check, make sure you've got a plan for this, um, because you can easily get into trouble here. So I'm drawing a bunch of stuff down here that basically is almost irrelevant. Um, and a real danger here that's worthwhile looking out for is putting in a bit too much detail at this stage. And yeah, running into running into trouble. So I've sort of got, I've got these... And then, yeah, so that's on one layer, right? So I got one layer there, boom, one layer there, boom. All right, now let's use our foreground too. And what I'm going to do here is just add in a bunch of this grass. Now this will be tricky to flat because I'm not closing all the edges. But what I'm going to do is, is try and leave a bit of space around the, the logo text here. And this is going to help me to make it read. But we are kind of blurring some of this stuff out here. So this will be a tricky one. So I'll show you how I'm going to handle this at the flat stage as we progress. Again, that'll probably be in a, in a following video. Boom, boom. And this will be a painful, annoying um, layer to flat because there's so many, going to be so many broken shapes, so many annoying bits and pieces. But I think it'll it'll be worth it. And again, we'll only have one of these, right? Not gonna have not gonna have a whole bunch of them. All right. Okay, and over here. Same thing. Got much smaller, simpler flowers here. Just gonna create them in a much simpler way. Don't. And I think often this, like this stuff is, is where it's so easy to go too quick if you're, you know, sort of early on with your journey, trying to figure this stuff out. This is probably like the number one mistake that I would make is when you're doing this, um, and, and this is why I, I like doing real-time tutorials, because you kind of get to see how long some of these little bits and pieces actually take. And yeah, I think it's it's really important to understand that 
you know, not actually that much time has has passed as we've if we've done this. We're probably, you know, probably like actually half an hour into this, and it seems like, you know, this is gonna this is gonna take forever. But all these things are gonna be very. This is basically finished lines. These things aren't gonna need much more. And you know, putting that extra little bit of effort here, um, you know, really sort of sorting these things out, just having the patience to go through, like do the drawing. This is not painting, right? This you don't need to do hours and hours of polishing on top of it. If we kind of get these right, we're just gonna add flat color and that's it's done. So yeah, it's so very important to just have the patience. Um yeah. And go for it. All right, so here's the character. So I'm gonna have the character. A little bit in front of All right, let's make this a bit sort of wobbly. And here again I'm I'm breaking up the the bottom of it, which which will be annoying from a flatting point of view, but Mm. Let's start from the top here. Go down. Fade out. Let's see if we can zoom in. Hit it again. You can see I'm a little bit off that line, but probably not going to make that much difference. Add a little bit of texture here. All right, boom. Coming over, got a bracelet here. Bracelet here. Bracelet here. Again, the sequence you do all these is super dependent on your style and how much you know how long you've kind of been doing this we'll see whether that you know what I was doing takes you know was maybe me going a little bit fast but yeah you you get better and faster at creating things that you have, you know, inked and penciled and done this a million times for. Some knuckles. Let's see if adding some witchy fingernails kind of helps. What's going on here? This is coming down. It's coming here. This is not the ideal sequence with which to to ink any of this. All right, we want this finger to be going behind. Whoop. So get lesser tool, select and delete. There we go. All right, what else we got? So that's coming there. I can't do that until I've got the hair. That's the same. All right, but we can probably get that one. We can probably get that one then we can probably get this one and we can probably get this get this get this mm. so do we see a bit of the Kind of breast behind there, like this. Probably not. 
Probably not. Let's go back there. So the probably so this is the thing the the more you work the construction drawing phase right the more you really work that initial bit of work you really sort everything out the easier this phase is which again it it's it's not necessarily a matter of right or wrong because if you skip a lot of the construction then you have a bit more time here to really think about okay what what sequence should i do this you know let me kind of think about it let let's let's step through the drawing in maybe more of a logical way because that way i can kind of do some drawing at the same time if you do the construction drawing a lot more sort of tightly and you figure it out and for me again you know hopefully we'll see touch wood but you know that the level of sort of construction that i've done here is you know more than i would do if i'm just kind of sketching around and messing about um and what that allows us to do is just move a little bit faster again make that up see if i'm putting that there is going to help That's a bit tight. Let's make that a bit looser. See if that kind of helps. Mm. Up here. So again, we'll indicate some of that bicep, put that there, okay, we'll indicate it over here as well, but I'm not going to draw all this, because I'm just going to, again, indication, indication, uh, and this bit is probably going to go over there. It's going to go over there, although we're going to have hair going over everything. So we'll, we'll see again, not the right sequence to do that in. But there is a degree to where, um, like the more hesitation we have or the more hesitation I have, the more likely I'm going to be to think about it. And I feel like there is a lot of power in just kind of going. Now, I was going to have some little sort of beak teeth thing for this. I'm not sure how sensible that is. It might. Again, this kind of thing, it's pretty easy to like, edit out. I do feel like maybe it just adds a bit of... Com it, it's, it's a bit fiddly for that size of thing. Right? So, yeah, hesitation. So, so part of the reason why I was sort of doing things with the... the sequence that I was doing them in is because I kind of just want to get them done. You can see now I'm like... I'm hesitating a bit. Right? We're kind of like, oh, let's redo that again. All right. Same thing here. Boom. extra feathers that are coming out of nowhere and yeah same thing let's go bump bump go 
a ring there. to articulate this thumb a bit better so it's kind of clearer what's going on and it might be better again I might just not have the resolution with this particular style to worry about where the fingernails go that may be the, the sort of solution there but yeah if I just kind of go in there and we we just kind of do the the hands you know you just kind of get them done often that is the best way for me from from my experience if i kind of think about it too much then yeah often it ends badly because the, the good thing about doing digital work is you, you can kind of undo stuff right it, it's maybe not the best practical thing to do maybe maybe not the best thing from a from a stylistic point of view to to learn to you know just constantly be undoing or whatever but th there is a certain degree to where i think you kind of have to just go for it um when it comes to inking especially if you've developed the the underdrawing the construction enough right just let's go in there nine times out of ten if I kind of say well let, let's sort of give it a go and if I come back at the end of it and I'm like that's still no good which is again one of the another one of these sort of stages I often have set aside let's let's go back after the you know after it's all finished and check and be like look did I did I go too fast did I try and draw that hand did it did it not work right that can happen for sure um you know nine times out of ten it's fine nine times nine times out of ten it's 100 percent fine and uh you know we needn't have worried it's maybe not perfect but in the grand scheme of things it's not important and this is where like you might be saying well why not get it all perfect well There are, there are larger considerations um, when it comes to, you know, sort of making these images and thinking about how to, you know, make, make a good image. And it, it's so important to understand in general what is actually going to make a difference to the feeling of, of finish, of polish. Um, and it's very easy to get stuck up in, like, artistic craft ego so for instance back there i was trying to draw the thumb right and maybe i haven't drawn the thumb well enough to really do a good job of it i'm not quite sure of the anatomical right like but, but also maybe just kind of leaving it as a shape and not trying to put in the thumb nail line is better um, and, and that's actually one of these things where people are going to look at it and, and they're not going to notice because the style doesn't really have that level of fidelity, right? Like physically, the, the size of the pen that I'm using, the finished sort of line that I'm using doesn't allow me to kind of add fingernails when I'm drawing hands that size. And there's certainly not going to be a primary read, right? They're, they're not going to be something where, you know, anyone kind of looks at those and thinks, you know, that's the, the main sort of point of, of the image. So, often what we need to do is just kind of give in and and go with what sort of looks good, right? And, and often I think our ego, or well, certainly this is the case for me, again, let me know in the comments down below, right? Whether or not that idea of like, I, I should be able to figure out where that thumbnail is, right? And it's not looking right. Is that ego is it because i i feel like i should be be drawing it well or is it because the drawing actually requires for this illustration for that to be 
done well. Did I need to do more construction drawing to get this right or, you know, what, right? So here we're seeing again, like one of the things that I probably didn't sort out that well was what on earth is happening with this giant kind of plume of feathers, right? You've got this ridiculous plume of feathers here and they don't make any anatomical sense at all. Mm. So this is one of these things. Again, is it going to matter? Does it matter? Does anyone care? Is it, is it is it is it my ego saying but you should figure out where in three dimensions that bird was. And we did have a conversation about the bird and needing reference versus not reading needing reference. Now Again, I I think this will be okay, but we will we will find out. Um and also this is like a weird sort of tangent. I feel like maybe at the end I might want to move this flower down a little bit. Or delete it completely. I think that's getting in the way. Um, but yeah, but I think that bird is simple enough. Boom. All right. So next is... Let's... Put in these major lines. And, hmm. Might also do is. Yeah, I probably think we need to make oh. I think we need to make this rock part of the character. So basically this will be all on one, all on one layer. All right. So everything else can wait, I think, for a little bit. Let's focus on the face, because once I do that, I think everything will kind of cascade down. All right. So this is another sort of point that I think is, is really worth well, worthwhile mentioning when it comes to inking or, or sort of finish lines. All right, if we kind of like zoom out for a minute to sort of see where we are. Um, it, there's not really any sequence that you sort of should or shouldn't do it. Often people like to start with the outlines. There's a lot of theory that is related to the way that we actually draw an ink traditionally. When you're inking traditionally, you... You know, it often is better to kind of do all the outlines first because then you kind of remember where they are. You know, it's easy to kind of forget, you know, if, if you get a little bit mixed up and you put some lines in, um, sort of forget or maybe you, the pencil gets smudged. So there's a lot of stuff that is related to the practicalities of actually working in a particular medium. With digital, that doesn't really matter, right? You know, you, you're not degrading the pencils as you work on it. So it's, it's normally kind of fine. Um, but foreground to background tends to work. But I think what is also important is to think about what are the sort of initial like key lines that we're putting in. Because if you, if you start with what is central, it can be a lot easier to then sort of work out. So for instance, what I'm going to do here is kind of start at the center of the face and I'm going to work, I'm going to kind of work outwards. And this will mean that as I'm calibrating the look of my final lines, right, and, and I'm working within the iconography of these, the, the width of these lines here, 
And I think for this, again, I'm just going to sort of have the, a bit like sort of manga style, right? I, I'm going to make the, the eyes just visible through the hair, right? Because again, hair is sort of transparent. Like it, it kind of works from a, right? From a, from a technical point of view. But I'm actually going to put in the, the key elements first that we really need to look at which is these major elements of the feature. Now, if we kind of zoom out, that's kind of what, what we're looking at. Now, again, I'm trying to line these up, right? Previously, I had a bunch of sort of sketch lines here and there, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. What I'm really focused on now is the central sort of elements. And I'm going to also put in the features first and see if I can sort of get them working. And again, we're going to have to suggest here because the, the thickness of the brush that I've got is not, not going to allow me to, you know, go in there and do, draw some really sort of clumsy lines. Right. So again, I, I was sort of talking about how when we're doing the construction that, you know, it's good to kind of put in these lines, but I, I might actually leave those for the color. Right, so we kind of draw some stuff here, and maybe we'll work underneath. Right, so if we sort of look at what that's that's going to look like, that's kind of what we're actually going to have, and we'll, we'll see whether this works. We can always go and add lines later. That's that's important to understand. Um, now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another layer here. And I'm going to start working in these bits of hair on that other bit, on that other layer. And hopefully this will kind of allow me to like if I mess up, right, I can kind of erase. Because again, we do, we do have to worry about sort of tangents here, but at the same time, I think it can be good to just mess around um, and, you know, sort of not necessarily worry too much about the tangents. So here I've got this, right? Is that in front of or behind? I think I'm going to make that behind. Mm. Where exactly is that coming from? What is in front of what? So th this is quite tricky because I because I this is where I sort of haven't really done enough. Construction, so I'm sort of having to figure it out. So again, just make some different lines. Um, I think that's often a good way to sort of do it. And it is possible here to, to lose some of these edges. Right? I don't need to make each of all of these lines like 100% solid or anything like that. Because oh. with the face again, it, it's worthwhile being able to get it exactly right. We don't always want to need to go in there and, you know, close off all the lines and that kind of thing. I think with a face, it's it's worthwhile. All right, so let's maybe we could we could sort of hint at some of the some of the kind of anatomy behind there. But obviously it's being covered by the hair. Well, all right, so what I could do is try putting this face on here. Boom. 
foam. I think that is probably going to work. And again, good to be able to draw over. I'm not sure about that. I think that's a bit better. Uh, no, I kind of want kind of going fully subverbal trying to think about this. <laughs> My apologies. It's like a um, crossword puzzle. So I want to show, the thing is, I kind of want to show, let's see if we can put this in. Oh. Kind of want to show this. Right, got this line. Coming here. Well, that's a bit more dimensionality. So it's like shape, dimension. Um, and so this is a good example of where, you know, like as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh man, I should have put, I should, I knew I should have put more effort into like sorting this out, but I was just, you know, I was just like, oh, no, it'll be, all right. it'll be okay. I'll be able to figure it out, uh, which is not to say I can't, right? You know, it's like we're, 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 uh, we're making progress, but. Yeah, probably would be less, I'd be able to talk through this if I was, um, yeah, doing it properly. But um, anyway, so so the, the key thing here that, that I think is really important is that when you're creating stuff in a line and color style that you have to pay attention to the iconography. I, I'm not, I'm not, this is not real, That this is a complete fake thing. So here we got some really interesting sort of line work going on. And... You know, I think there's there's another one of these kind of desires often to like again close all these lines, like finish this off and be like, oh, what's happening here? But you see how I'm kind of just leaving some of this open, right? And and I think that probably is you know the best solution. Um, and and again, exactly where this line goes in relation to this line. So let's zoom up, right, to look at this from an iconic, literally, uh, pun unintentional. Right, I've got this thickness of the line and I got this thickness of the line. So it's really important that the eye is the first thing we sort of put in. And it's really important that that relates to the nose and the way these are put in. Because I need to make sure that this and this line feel the same. And I need to put in this line for the face after. And I also need to put in the lips first because the precise distance that this goes this line is right relating to the to where the lips are sort of really actually defines a lot of the form and the structure so often we, we run into these troubles where and this happened to me a, a lot when i was doing a lot of loomis method early on is i would construct the face and i'd say okay tim you know the loomis method you know where all of the features are if you construct it properly everything should fit so if i construct the face then I should be able to fit eyes within that. And that's kind of true, but when you're dealing with the iconography of line, we are essentially roughing in a rough version of where all the features should be. But when we come to doing the lines, it's critical to understand that the lines exist in an iconic, symbolic fantasy land of nonsense. And we need to respect 
that, right? We need to respect that they kind of are just sort of floating there to a certain degree. They're representing the eye. They are not the eye, right? These eyes don't exist in three dimensions. They're just kind of fake eyes. So if you appreciate the role structure plays and then the sequence with which you would probably want to ink something like a face, which is, I would say, start with the the, the, the eyes or the center line, right? Um, and, and make sure those things relate, make sure the lips relate to that, and then draw the, the face in after. You'll find, and this is such like inside baseball minutia, but this often makes the difference between your characters feeling good and not feeling good, is that it's often the subtle, the subtle way that the outline of the facial shape, even if you constructed it properly, it's the subtle line that you create um, and the relationship of that to the way you've sort of placed the features that really gives most of the character. So, you know, if, if this line, if, if I've sort of drawn this in, right, and it's like a little bit more that way, it completely, right, it completely changes the, the look of the character, right? It, it's, you know, if, if this is a little bit this way, right, or a little bit this way, it completely changes the, the shape of the character's face. Um, so you kind of have to get this exactly right. The only way to get it exactly right is to think about the tool you're using and the width of the line that you're using, which will depend exactly on which brush you're using, how big the face is in relation to that brush. Let me know whether that makes sense. Um, again, I, I feel like that wasted so much of my life trying to sort of really figure that out and, and not figure um, cause, and, and again, I, I really class that under that ego thing of being like, well, I, I, I should know from an anato anatomical standpoint where the facial features go. I should know. I've done my study. Professional artists know that. Professional artists all ink it exactly the way that I think, well, I, I shouldn't say all, but I'd be surprised the degree to which I would see, uh, you know, professional manga artists, um, you know, professional uh, European Bon Destiné artists. There's a lot of, uh, you know, videos of like uh, Mobius, of Jean Giraud, and, and that's kind of how he would do it. And I looked at that and I was like, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> As opposed to trying to sort of say, well, you, you should be able to kind of start anyway. Um, and I think even you, you kind of notice um, people like the, the late Kim Jong-ji, who, you know, did a lot of this kind of, you know, free drawing, a lot of it is, he would sort of start in weird spots, but I think there is often a sequence by which it kind of sort of makes sense, right? Um, and I think if you kind of study that, you, you see that the sequences with which um, artists do that kind of free drawing is important. They are often placing particular features first, particular features second, and I think the sequence is not to be trivialized or ignored. It's not to say it's the thing that's going to make a difference. So here we got one of those case in point, right? I've got this, which kind of worked before, but based on the width of the line, all right, up here, boom, down here, boom, boom, right? What I want to do is make sure that this has, uh, that's creating, I don't want that to be too tight. Right, I need to make sure that there's a little bit of separation there. And now here, again, I can't sort of start this here. I need to start that there to see, to make sure we get a good sort of sequence. And then that kind of messes up this line. So we kind of chase things, we chase things around. But if you kind of get it all sort of flowing, it works pretty well. Mm. All right, so again, you know, I, I feel like that's, it's kind of working all right. Um, That's kind of here. And here we've got a bit of stuff on the backpack over here on this far side. Yeah, so again, I, I feel like this is probably this is probably enough to, to sort of progress with. 
Um, we haven't fully figured out what's going on. Kind of here. Yeah, that's still a bit awkward because I've sort of got this line. This is where it's really good to have this on separate layers because that's a huge pain to have to redraw that. But yeah, let's see if we can kind of just cheat our way there. Maybe hide this. Pretend that kind of doesn't exist. Same thing here. And I was thinking, like, should we, right, should I put some tonality here? Don't know. Well. All right, that's probably enough. I need to stop fiddling with this. It's not going to, again, n none of this is, is critical. But I am still drawing on that line, uh, on that layer above. Um, and that is yeah, immensely, immensely useful. Right. Boom. I think I was going to have, again, some kind of line coming down here. I don't know whether that, I don't know whether kind of doing that is worth it or not. I mean, I think, thinking, I think that the problem is like what's, Right, is that, is this going above it? Does any of this matter? This is probably, I'm probably just being sort of fussy now. Get on with it. See if we can punch a few of these little sort of shadows, soften some of this up. All right. I think that is is that. Let's see if we can. Maybe shadows here might help, maybe not. All right. So yeah, I think, uh, I think that's going pretty, pretty well. So you can see here, these are the things that we've, we kind of drawn right on top on that, you know, just doing that has kind of helped me immensely. Now again, you know, I, I don't need to, you know, I can I can keep going with this on the second layer with the goal to, you know, eventually kind of merge it down. I think that's probably a good goal to have, right? Merge it down eventually, but, you know, we can keep going. Again, this hair is not, you know, sort of master level. Um, anime girl hair, but it's, I, I'm hoping it'll do. Hair is one of those things that still is not, even after doing this for so long, still have not put enough effort into visual library of hair. All right, boom, boom. Let's close these lines.
Boom. Boom. So, yeah, we're getting there. We are getting there. Um, and, and we... We certainly could, uh, you know, with this particular illustration, could could be going a lot faster. Um, again, you know, I, I'm trying to stop and, and notice things and, and also do some things a, a little bit sort of better. Um, but, you know, you could easily make it look just as good by, you know, not doing half of this stuff. Uh, you know, none of this is actually, you know, really going to make a huge difference to the to the bottom line. Yeah, if we do get the character right, everything else will kind of be in a pretty good shape. All right, let's see if we can get this right. Now, what did we have going here? I don't think I really figured out a good... good solution here. Um, and yeah, it can be tricky. This is something I sort of mentioned when I was, you know, constructing a lot of that. Um, sort of pelvic anatomy can be, can be very tricky to figure out, you know, what's what when you're at the when you're at the finished pencil inking stage, right? We kind of put in a lot of that, a lot of that detail, but you know, the question is, what, 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 what is it? What did I put in, right? Um, Right, so again, we want a gap here. These little gaps here, like this stuff is so important, just leaving those. It's not a huge gap, but that will that will make a big difference. All right, got this coming down here. This coming here. Mm. There's lots of lots of awkward tangents over here. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what we need to do. So we've done a lot of, you know, sort of structure and, you know, <laughs> messing around here. What we kind of end up with is, is some very kind of simple lines. Um, and we just hope that they're, you know, in the right spot. Right, and we'll sort of imagine that behind this there is some kind of like sort of loincloth-y thing. Boom. So again, these to to me the you know the the thing that this always reminds me of is like you know one of those crossword puzzles, right? We're kind of figuring out what goes where. When do I add it? Boom. All right. OK, 
Okay, let's draw this, this, this. So yeah, lots of stuff that, you know, as, as I keep saying, you know, it, it often feels like, you know, we're kind of like watching paint dry sometimes with the, you know, the the level of kind of minutia we, we have to kind of look at when we're sort of inking and, and doing that. But, you know, this is sort of chill out time. Often, you know, in tutorials, people, you know, they sort of skip past this, right? It's like, oh yeah, then, then I just did the, the inking and, you know, we kind of do it really fast. Um, but again, I, I think it's important to understand, hmm, I don't know whether I want to sort of do that. I, th I think it's really important to understand how, how long it takes to do these things and, and how sort of arduous it is and you, you still have to kind of focus. Um, and, and I think that's, that's really the, the main point. That's the main reason I, I sort of still, you know, do these in real time. Because you do need to focus, right? That there's still a lot of thinking going on here. There's still a lot of calculation. It's a different type of calculation to when we're doing the drawing, right? It's a little bit more, again, thinking about the minutiae of millimeters, right? Like, is this line the right thing here? How oh, I've got a bad tangent there. What do I do? You know, that's more what we're thinking about and worrying about. Bom. 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 All right. Oh. So yeah, all this boring stuff, drawing feet, you know, drawing. And again, it's good to, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this back here super suggestive, super loose, and, and I'm gonna have to flat this in a, in a very particular way. All right, but I think um, it's important to, to separate these lines out here from some of the other ones. And also that means I can kind of hear, you know, right? I, like, I think it's good to get a feel for, right, the character kind of sitting on the grass, right? Okay. Um, and so yeah, is the we can sort of see the right the other foot there, and we could you know we could um one of the other things you could do is you know we could play up some of the shading on here because we know that this is kind of in the shadow right we're gonna have shadow on the character now you know it's we, again this is not sort of accurate shadow casting or anything like that but. It does, it does kind of help us to contextualize what's going on, right? If I kind of say, yeah, let's, let's put all that there. All right. So yeah, I think, I think that is working, working fine, actually. Boom. All right. Let's keep going with this character. So basically, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of start to shade or put some rough indication of shade behind here. And this also is one of these things that's really good to do on a separate layer. That means, you know, as you just saw, right, if I want, I can 
I can delete a bit. You know, it's not going to be the end of the world. And really, this is all just there to, you know, act as a little bit of a textural counterpoint to the rest. And a little bit of abstract pattern. And also the other thing is, if, if we're going with a flat style, I do want the inside of the cape here to be a different color or tone to the outside, right? That, that's in the color plan, right? If we go back to the color plan, oh, save that while we do this. Yeah, so if we go back here again, like inside the cape, is different to outside. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but if I if I if we think about well, that is representing shadow kind of. If I put shadow there, then why isn't there shadow everywhere else? So I think putting some of the shadow in tonally with the um, with the line helps me to kind of still be able to put a flat color there. without then saying, well, why isn't there shadow elsewhere? Um, and again here, this is a bit tricky because, and this is where it's a good trick is, let's just have a white layer that we kind of intercept, right? Zoom out, see what we're working on. Whoop. Yeah, so I think, I think that is gonna, that is gonna work okay. Now again, I, I'm not trying to do it everywhere. We're not we're not being sort of brutalistic about it. Um, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit sort of subtle. It's just pattern, just pattern behind there. All right, what what am I missing on the character? Again, adding that white layer that's kind of beneath your finish lines, but above your kind of construction drawing is a good thing because it just kind of says, okay, what am I missing? So here we go. This is foreground plus character. Um, yeah. And, and I, I feel like, I feel like this is kind of working all right. I, I do think that like, and again, I, I don't need to flatten this ever really, but but I could flatten it um, at some point soon. But yeah, with this, I feel like I feel like that's mm, it's kind of an awkward tangent. That's one of those things we we may delete that right at the end. It's kind of a bit awkward. But yeah, there we go. So we, we're kind of we're kind of on we're on the home stretch. We just got to do. You guessed it, a million more leaves in the background. Okay, with the background, the most important thing really is to look at. I'm just gonna delete. There's a couple of lines here. I just sort of noticed I needed to need to need to delete. But yeah, a, a big part of what what we want to look at is hierarchy of detail, and this is where we take a close look at what do we actually want to be in focus, right? Like, like what, what is actually here um, in the foreground that needs to be detailed and, and how do we sort of relate that to the background? So he, here I've sort of still got, right, we've still got some foregroundy stuff that I'm going to work up. But also then, you know, you, you can render every leaf, every every little bit of texture on every tree in the background, it's not necessarily going to make things look better because we need to consider hierarchy of detail. What is the most important thing? What is the second point, etc. The most important thing is, is the character's face, right? That's our primary read. It's right at the top of our kind of triangular composition. So we don't really want anything in the background to compete with that. We want the background to relate to the foreground in terms of detail 
Um, but yeah, I don't want to draw too much attention to the background. So let's keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to work from from back to some from front to back, and I'm going to start by dealing with a lot of these right little bits here that we were dealing with previously. And what I'm going to try and do is go a little bit faster and we'll look at how I can setting things up in the foreground allows us to go a little bit sort of faster and, and quicker and looser here. So I'm going to use, I'm obviously going to make these the same type of flower as what I've got here. But because I've sort of established that, I, I don't actually need to, to go in there and, and add quite as much detail. Actually, I'm going to need to sort of edit this, I think, or... Mm. Yeah. Because I, I've sort of established what they are in in the foreground. And what you'll find is that if we do a good job of that, everything else takes care of itself. So you know, we're gonna try and continue to close my lines here. Drawing stuff past the, all right. Past the bleed line, that doesn't really make any difference. What I'm actually, what's actually on this layer, right, is, is this. So this is probably going to be something that I'm going to flat in a, in a pretty simplistic way. Because this is not going to be super critical to the success of sort of anything really. And this is where we can start to go a lot faster, a lot looser. Because we've established that we we kind of can draw this stuff properly in the foreground. And again, that, that allows us a lot of latitude. Although what I might do is still try and maintain this this sort of shape here see if we can make this yeah as kind of solid as possible and really what I'm saying here is like this stuff is not right is not that important so I'm going to still try and get as many sort of silhouette pops off as I can here Right, got some some different bits and pieces. Right, you know, the 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 more bits of silhouette we have, kind of um, coming through there, the better. Right, like that's really going to help that the level of fidelity there. Um, yeah, we might even want to, you know, I could start making up a bit of extra stuff here. Create some complexity it's looking a little bit a little bit weird and messy there but yeah you get the idea uh, I feel like that that might even be a little bit much yeah let's just leave that but um yeah I mean ho hopefully you can kind of see there that you know I'm, I'm being a, a lot looser with it Right, we got some of these flowers here that are uh, probably let's leave that one there. So all, all I'm doing when I'm kind of like fiddling around, and like being like, oh, a bit, a bit less here, a bit, a bit more there. I'm just trying to balance the 
the feeling of complexity in the background. So I'm just like using instinct to kind of say oh, a little bit more, a little bit less. Again, let's um, let's see if we can. So you can see, I've drawn these a few times now. I'm starting to get a feel for it. Right. Let's uh, let's see if we can do more with less in this instance. So I'm going to try and stay away from the from the bird wings a little bit. All right, but let's see if we can get some complexity there to kind of again. It'll make this feel like it's less kind of stuck out in the middle doing doing nothing. So this probably also will be a you know a bit of a tricky tricky one to flat and you know kind of work out but um, this stuff in the long run is not too bad. Mm. So just putting more of these flowers in here. Hopefully this will work because again, I you know I'm kind of making this up and I'm making this is where it's tricky, not following my color plan as much as maybe I should. But um, hopefully this will come good. And also, I think it it is it is worthwhile like setting setting the level of detail that you want in you know in the foreground, right? That gives me a really good indication of you know where I want to be now that I'm here. Um, you know, I can go a little bit, a little bit, a little bit looser, a little bit rougher. And, and all I'm looking for is this silhouette. So, so what I'm going to try and optimize for is this right, this silhouette here. Right, let's go up here with another one of these. Boom. Yeah. So again, I'm I'm just looking for this silhouette. We'll fill this up with kind of noise. I think then we're good. So that is our sort of foreground. Right, let's sort of zoom out. Our foreground. So still in the foreground, it's still like sort of part of her, right? It'll still feel part of her, but just from practicality of like selecting things, it's much better if this is on a line, uh, a, a layer behind her. Next set of things that we need to do is actually, I'm kind of imagining the way this is going to work is I'm going to have a collection of these flowers up here. And again, I'm stepping back, you know, we're not zoomed up as much anymore. Oh. And 
And we're also going to have some leaves. And these are going to be on one sort of layer in the foreground. And again, what I'm after is primarily the, the silhouette that they're creating. But these will be well, these will be kind of the the primary silhouette that is going to be a little bit darker than all this other stuff on the background. Hopefully. Hopefully this makes sense. So we're just doing it kind of roughly. Got some round flowers that I'm imagining are kind of part of the, um, maybe the vine that these flowers are part of. Because obviously, you know, I mean, I guess you do get flowers. I guess you do get flowers on trees sometimes like that. Um, but yeah, I definitely want... of this here. And again, I do want to be able to work this if it does, you know, if we do kind of come off the bleed at some point, you know, and I need to actually show what is behind this sort of dark bar that won't actually get printed, but, you know, for the most part, don't need to worry too much about that right now. So again, this really is all, all I need to do. And, and what I'm going to do is, you know, that was drawn pretty roughly as I was sort of saying. But I can go in here. Let's, you know, let's try and close some lines. We'll clean it up a little bit. All right. Think about some different different shapes and things in there. Maybe some creepers or something like that. All right. Okay, what else are we going to do? The exact same thing on the other side. But yeah, let's zoom out again because I feel like I feel like that gave us the right level of focus, right? Like how much detail do we actually need on these? Um, although you do have to watch out zooming up because sometimes you know Photoshop and, and other programs can start artifacting the the, pen, the strokes that you're using. Um, it can become problematic. So you do have to do have to be kind of careful. Make sure we, you know, zoom up every now and then, check what's happening with the lines. But yeah, this is, you know, do, doing this line stuff is, you know, this is the chill out phase. Often, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing these types of jobs, you know, I save this for, you know, later in the day. I'm just going to chill out, ink some 
some stuff, do finished lines, hang out. And yeah, that's kind of part of the fun. And I think, um, like you, you may be watching this kind of thinking like, yeah, that's sort of cool, but you know, I, I like, you know, sort of different processes. There's, 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 there's many, many different ways to, to work up an image. And a lot of it is really based on your personality, right? I, I think people who often, um, you know, like sort of painting things, it's where you kind of see the work emerge, right? You start with a vague idea and then you kind of see the, the work emerge kind of step by step, you know, piece by piece. When you're, when you're working with the line and color style, it, it's, you kind of start with a lot of the definition. You start with the detail. As we've started with this overall tutorial, we start with a, with a thumbnail. We start with a, a plan and then we add sort of detail to that. But you, you never really know how it's going to turn out until the end, right? So, you know, here I'm sort of sitting here and I, we're drawing like a million little kind of silly flowers and things. And we don't really know how this is going to turn out until, until it's all said and done. And th there is a certain degree to where like that, that is the point, right? Like that is part of the fun of working in this particular style. Um, and you might be like, well, you know, like that's, that sort of sounds a bit crazy, but it's a little bit easier to see the image fresh, right? Like you, you do get a nice experience working in a comic book style where, you know, it's, it's only at the end where you see it all come together. And you do get a nice little surprise where you kind of put in the colors and you're like, oh, that's what it looks like. That, yeah, you know, I did all this stuff here. But what that means is you, you're kind of getting to see the image with fresh eyes. Where And 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 th there's not really that much you can do to it because, you know, the drawing's kind of finished. If you're working with painting, right, you're always having to make that decision of, you know, blindly looking at it and, and kind of going like, when's it finished? Whereas we, we kind of know when line and color styles are finished. Uh, you kind of do the drawing and then you think you've done enough and you kind of want to move to the color. I, I, I mean, certainly that's sort of what happens in my cases. I'm like, I'm sick of doing this. Let's see what it looks like when I actually finish it off. Um, but there is a little bit of a surprise where you, you kind of actually see what's there. And yeah, it's like the first time you actually really see it. Um, I think there's something sort of inherently interesting about that that it, that is unique to that particular process um, and shouldn't be sort of viewed as like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know. It's like, um, you know, every, every process is different, but that is something that's actually, I think, quite fun about doing things that way. Um, because it's not the same with other processes. You, you kind of are like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I didn't add enough detail or I didn't, you know, finish it. Whereas when, when you're working with the line and color style, yeah, you really kind of see, you see it for the first time. And it's kind of interesting. Anyway, I mean, let me know whether, whether you agree. Because um, that's certainly one of those things that's going gonna, is gonna to sort of vary. So, so you can kind of see here. right? We've kind of done most of that foreground stuff. And, and what you can see, hopefully, is that, you know, through doing this, I really have done most of the, the kind of heavy lifting. Uh, you know, certainly we can, you know, I can, I'm not sure what's happening exactly there. But yeah, like a lot of the heavy lifting is done by just putting in those foreground elements. Now, they will be a bit of a pain to flat. But all I've got left to do now, really, is this background. That really is background. And if you do 
get clear about what is in the foreground, what is in the background, what is primary, what is secondary read, right? Like what, what, what the point of all these things are. It, uh, yeah, it does make, it does make these things a little bit easier to, to finish. Um, because often what happens is, you know, if, if you're not clear on this in, in, in the background stage, and you're just sort of trying to, you know, add detail, or you're not really sure what you're doing. It's so hard to know when to stop. Right? It's so hard to know when to call it a day. That that that, that does not work. Not even a tiny bit. Let's get rid of that. What is going on here? So what I guess what, what I mean is like, you know, with this, I can be pretty vague, right? You see how I'm not, I'm not really, not really going very detailed with it, right? It's a lot more suggestive, right? Even with some of these branches and things, I'm going to be... much more suggestive, loose. Now I've still got one more background layer after this to make. Yeah, with this, I can just, again, we can be way looser, way more suggestive. Now, this stuff isn't, again, I, I, I'm not always 100% sure on, you know, exactly, you know, how big any of this stuff is, or, you know, whether it's meant to be bushes or shrubs or whatever. It's not really, you know, it's not really big enough to be. sort of trees in the background but yeah let's see if we can just add a little bit of suggestion hmm. yeah I feel like I feel like this is too much of a it's too much of a trunk Don't think we're going to see that there. Yeah, that feels a bit better. All right. And then we got some more of these. In the background. So a lot of drawing backgrounds is it's it's dealing with this stuff that I'm, I'm talking about right now, um, and and this does seem I know this does seem like it, it seems like a lot of it it seems like more of it should be about drawing, right? Like more of it should be a matter of you know how do I how do I draw well, you know what what can I do to you know, draw the tree better, the leaves better. A lot of what is going to make you you feel as if your backgrounds are better is, is paying attention to the hierarchy of detail. Boom. These also will be hard to flat. But yeah, you know, just like pattern, hierarchy of detail, uh, whether I draw the trees well or, or not is, you know, sort of less, probably less important. Well, 
this is something where you know we're we're all still learning. I'm still learning to, you know, really kind of figure out how to get these things to overlap properly. adding a little bit of texture but yeah the, the drawing here is very basic what what we need to pay attention to is how this relates to the face right so that's what we're always sort of thinking about and you know how this relates to the um, the text here right all of the stuff I'm doing to make sure that You know, we don't interfere with anything. So there's a looseness with these background marks that will allow me to be, I hope so, a little bit looser when it comes to the flatting. So with the foreground things, it's very tight. I, I need to make sure that, you know, everything's, right, everything's kind of pretty dialed in. Everything's pretty detailed with, with some of these. I feel like I feel like we can get much much more sort of suggestive and that I can also be suggestive with the with the coloring with the flatting with all of that stuff right like none of it's really none of it's really going to matter But uh, we'll see. Mm. Just thinking about some of these, like what's going to be where. thinking I might have these trees in here on a different right on a different layer but yeah we're almost done again this this stuff does take time right like really just sort of noodling around um, But also, you know, it's, I, I keep saying it, but it's important to understand that the, the style that we work in here, you know, this is finish. This is, these are finished lines that are going to appear on the, um, you know, the finished page. So if we, if we sort of think about this, again, it's kind of almost over. It's not the same as doing a preparatory drawing for, um, you know, a, a painting or something like that where you're going to have to redo it all. This is it. All right. Okay. All right, so that's background two. And what I'm going to do on background three is basically everything else, I think. Just make sure that is actually saving. Yeah, that's all right. So yeah, let's let's basically do everything else, and everything that I just said applies even more. The further we get into the background, the more suggestive we probably should be the more loose we probably should be because certainly with the style that I'm going to be employing with the coloring, a lot of these little bits and pieces 
are just going to all essentially be the, the same color. So I'm really after mostly just this. sort of outline here. All right, that's kind of the that's kind of the goal. And so here we could kind of see a similar thing. Hmm. Yeah, probably could have pressed a little bit lighter. In fact, let's do that. Let's press lighter. Boom. Oh. Uh, whoop. All right. Go down here. And again, there's quite a bit of different had some, right, that's like potentially some sort of grass and things here. Okay. We might have some different trees back there. But yeah, you can see I'm we are starting to just suggest things. Mostly because, again, you know, I, I need to get this done in a particular amount of time. You know, I can't spend another five hours on the on the background. Um, but also because, like, you know, it's, it's not really going to matter. I think a lot of these are probably not, not really going to work. Put some overlap, right? Again, it's one of those. It's one of the simplest things drawing trees where we, we kind of want to draw all the branches um, and the trunk and, and everything, but it's it's covered by the canopy, right? <laughs> we kind of can't. Um, so you know, we, we often sort of get dragged into you know sort of trying to draw stuff that you just can't see from that particular angle. Um, Yeah, again, we'll see how this turns out. Again, this is one of those things, right? It's like sort of magical excitement trying to figure out like, oh, how's all this going to go, right? How much am I going to need to push it to the background? Is it is it going to work? Am I going to regret it? Not, you know, not putting in a bit more, um, right, a bit more effort. But you can see also like one of the strategies in terms of the foreground, middle ground, background is um, just making sure that's looking a bit rough to me. Yeah, just making sure that like if we kind of, I, I'm going to sort of have these different Right, these kind of different areas. We've got these things that are sort of overlapping each other. And you can see that, you know, a lot of this foliage here is not actually 
overlapping the sky. So even, even though this is like a little bit messy in here where we've got those foreground elements not fully, you know, drawn properly, um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, you know, we, we're not really going to notice any of that, you know. It's not, not really going to be super, super important. Well, yeah, I think honestly, I'm pretty much done with this, right? You know, I think this is I think we've done it. I think we've seen it, right again. And yeah, on the home stretch. So yeah, after this, probably in the in the next video, we will start to look at the color, um, which will be you know again you know this is the most important thing, um, and this you know whole sort of tutorial really is about the color, but hopefully you can see that you know planning the color and and thinking about it in a in a systematic way has allowed me to you know do this drawing and or understand what's going on. It, it's very hard. It's so easy to, at this stage to just kind of be like, meh, <laughs> you know, like, meh, I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm just going to check out. Like, none of this is going to make any difference, is it? Um, yeah, it, it's very easy to to not focus on the right things. And, and, and at this stage, be really second-guessing yourself and being like, oh, what color is this going to be? How's this going to work? Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the reality is now that we've sort of done that work, it's a lot easier to really see how these things are gonna are gonna you know work. You know, I can I can see that as I draw more of these flowers, I know they're gonna sort of be blue. I know this stuff in in the background isn't really gonna make much difference. Right. So, you know, it's it's very easy to sort of manage my expectations. But yeah, and I think uh I think we're pretty much done. So what we're gonna do in the next stage is create a series of flats for this finished line drawing. And basically I'm just gonna use the, the color plan that I had, right? We got all those elements in there, um, and, I, and I think it'll be pretty easy to kind of, you know, just sort of add all that stuff in, and, and then we'll kind of see what it looks like and, and go from there. But yeah, here are the kind of finished lines, right? And we went from, I'll kind of open up the, the construction version of this as well, so we can kind of see where we came from, see the progress. Oh, so yeah, we're going from from here, right? From from sketch land to color sketch land to construction to finished drawing, and uh, yeah, it's just going to be a matter of you know moving this forward and you know adding color, which should be based on the simple reliable process that we've got going here. This should be one of the more sort of like fun, interesting parts of the process. All right, that's all I've got for part three of this tutorial. So hopefully, you know, just sort of seeing me create the lines here and sort of talk about some of those ideas has given you a few tips for your own line work. Really to get good at lines, it, it does just take a long time, right? It does take a lot of you getting confident, you know, knowing sort of when you can just sort of go for it, when you can wing it. And there is really a you know, a creation loop that I often talk about where we really do need to understand how the construction phase that we did in part two of this series relates to the finish lines. You kind of, some like if, if your drawing is just not there, you can't just magic it up out of nowhere. You need to have drawn things hundreds of times for you to be able to kind of wing it, right? To take some like little fluffy sketch and kind of turn it into something magical. That really is built over, you know, years and years, decades of skill of, you know, drawing that kind of stuff again and again to the point where you can kind of say, ah, I could just do a little sketch and then create some finished illustration from it. In the beginning, 
you need to work on the construction phase, which we did in the previous sort of, um, you know, sort of part of this tutorial series. So that's so important to understand, right? That this is a, you know, a sort of symbiotic relationship, right? It's a cyclical experience of completing an image and then understanding, ah, oh, I needed to do more at the construction phase in order to do this. And again, in the beginning, the more you focus on, you know, sort of really nutting everything out in the beginning, the more you can then, you know, just sort of let it flow with the lines. And almost, you know, the more time you spend on the construction phase, the less time you have to spend on the, you know, finished line phase. So again, hopefully these ideas have helped you. Let me know in the comments down below if, you know, this helps you think through line work and comic book styles and how this stuff might relate to your style. Again, your style is going to be different. The way you sort of approach it is going to be different. But I think we share a lot of, you know, core ideas. Now, in part four of this uh, sort of tutorial series. What's coming up next should be pretty obvious. It's the color. And this is where we really try and look at how we take that initial thumbnail we did in part one, the blobby thumbnail, and through this process of, you know, drawing and construction, you know, how we kind of turn that simple color plan into a sort of finished illustration and, and really look at how we kind of take that simple color plan and add some subtlety to it, some complexity to it, some sophistication to it. And again, you know, try and sort of bring the whole thing to, uh, you know, as high a quality illustration as we possibly can. So I'll have that tutorial up soon. When it's up, you'll be able to check it out here. Other than that, I'll see you down below in the comments. Happy drawing.